Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live stream of OpenAI. I'm Olivier Godemont. I lead the OpenAI platform. As you all know, we've been busy building agents for the past few months. Deep operator, research, um, uh, deep research operator. And just last week, we released the agent SDK, which allows you to build your own custom agents. Today is really, really exciting. We're moving beyond text to voice agents. Many people prefer to speak and to listen over writing and reading. So in a way, voice is a very natural human interface. And today, we're going to enable developers and businesses to build voice agents. Agents which are reliable, accurate, and flexible. And so we're going to announce a bunch of new models and tools for that. So let's hear it directly from the team who built that offering. Thank you, Olivia. Hi, everyone. I'm Shen Yi. I work on OpenAI research team. Hello, I'm Yaroslav. I'm an engineer on OpenAI API team. And I'm Jeff Harris. I work on the OpenAI API product team. Today, we're releasing three new models and a bunch of new tools and capabilities designed to make it really easy for developers to build rich, human-like voice experiences. We have two new state-of-the-art speech-to-text models that outperform our previous model, Whisper, on literally every language that we've tested. We have a new text-to-speech model that for the first time lets developers control not just what the model says, but how it says it. And then we have a big update to our agents SDK to make it really easy to turn text-based agents into voice agents. So let's pause for a second. What is a voice agent and how do I even build one? Yeah, great question. We think of agents in general as AI systems that can act independently on behalf of a user or a developer. So you might see a text agent if you visit a website and you see a chat box in the bottom right and you want to ask about the product catalog or your recent orders. That's by text. You can do the same thing with voice. So you can call in and be speaking to an AI voice. Um, there's other ways to use voice agents. One of my favorites is language learning experiences where you can have a voice agent that's coaching you on pronunciation, creating a lesson plan for you, doing mock conversations with you in the language that you're learning. Many, many ways to build voice agents. Um, and we see two primary approaches that developers take. The first one is using more futuristic speech-to-speech -speech models. These are models that are capable of understanding audio directly and speaking directly back. They're really fast. They're what powers advanced voice mode in ChatGPT and our real-time API. The other approach, which a lot of developers do as the way to get started in voice, is what we think of as a chained approach where you take a speech-to-text model, understands what the user says, turns it into a text transcript that's then processed by a text-only LLM, like GPT-40, and then that model figures out an appropriate response and passes it to a text-to-speech model to speak back to the user. Developers often love the chained approach, first because it's modular. They can mix and match all the different components, so they're using the best models for their use case. They also love it because it's the easiest way to get really high reliability. The gold standard in terms of intelligence is still text-based models, though the speech-to-speech -speech models are catching up quickly. And then the third reason they love it is it's easier to get started. You can take all the work that you've done in a text-based agent, and you can prepend a speech-to-text model on one side, put text-to-speech on the other side, and now you have a voice agent. So for today, we're mostly going to focus on how we have new tools to help you build voice agents with that chained approach. So let's get into it. A few things to cover. We'll start with speech-to-text, where we have two new models, GPT-40 Transcribe and GPT-40 Mini Transcribe. You've been working on these models. I'd love to hear how they were built and how they perform. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. I'm happy to introduce more technical details for our new uh, speech-to-text models. Um, compared to our last generation models, Whisper and Whisper 3, our new generation model is based on our large speech model. This means this new model has been trained on trillions of audio tokens. It also ingests our latest technologies and also architecture of our models. We also distill the larger model down to a much smaller size one, which is a GPT-40 mini transcribe. The smaller size model is faster and more efficient. It also retains as good transcription capability as possible compared to the larger models. Let's see how good our models are. We measure the accuracy of our transcription by word error rate. The word error rate is the percentage of uh, words that our model gets wrong. So of course, the lower the word error rate is, it means the higher our model actually performs. And then the dark blue is the newest 4O, and the one beside it is 4O mini. Exactly. As you can see, compared to our previous generation models, Whisper 2 and Whisper 3, our newest model actually perform almost like um, on every single language we performed across the board. Nice. Yeah, awesome. Very cool. 
Let's also take a look at uh, where we are, you know, on the compared to the other options on the market. Nice. So what I'm seeing here is that the new model is state of the art across many languages, English, Spanish, more. Um, and then actually 4.0 Mini is state of the art, if not for its bigger brother model as well. Yeah, if you are actually looking for a very high accuracy transcription model, our model definitely is the best choice for you. Great. So that's GPT-4.0 Transcribe and GPT-4.0 Mini Transcribe. 4.0 is available in the API today for just 0.6 cents per minute, same price as Whisper. And 4.0 Mini Transcribe is 0.3 cents, so half price. Really, really great state-of-the-art options. We're also enhancing our speech-to-text APIs with streaming, so developers can pass in a continuous stream of audio into the model and get a continuous stream of text in response. That makes it easier to build really fast experiences. And we're bundling into these APIs a bunch of hard problems that developers need to solve to build voice experiences. So they come with noise cancellation, so the model isn't going to get tripped up by background sounds. They also include a new semantic voice activity detector, which chunks the audio up based on when the model thinks the user's actually finished speaking. So as a developer, you don't need to worry about processing some half-spoken idea. Um, and all those capabilities are available in the speech-to-text APIs as well as in our real-time API. So very excited for you to check that out. Next capability is a new text-to-speech model, GPT-40 Mini TTS. Yaroslav, would love for you to show us how this one works. Yeah, let me pull this up. So um, <clears throat> this is openai.fm. Um, it's a website uh, we built just to make it easy to play with this new model. Um, so as you can see, there are a bunch of voices that you can choose from. Um, there are different prompts that we pre-generated, but you can also type in your own. So this is basically a new field that we added. It's an instructions field that tells the model how you want it to speak the text. Um, so yeah, let's maybe try um, try some... Um, Mad some scientist, way. please. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> As you can see, like we prompted basically like how you, we want to deliver, what kind of so tone we want to have. It's high energy, it's chaotic. Exactly, All yeah. All right, let's, let's, let's see. see what that's like. And it may be busy. All right, busy. Let's yeah, try. let's try again. One more time. Ahaha! The stars tremble before <laughs> my genius. The rift is open. The energy surging. Unstable? Perhaps <laughs> dangerous. Most certainly, <laughs> Captain Ryland. This is really intense. Okay, so that's a lot. I'm curious if we took the same voice and tried to, yeah, let's yeah, make let's it serene. Yeah, 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 let's see. Yeah. How about we? Let's say um, the live stream is going really well. Yes. You're doing great. Yeah. Typing under pressure. Let's <laughs> you see did how it goes. This live stream is going really well. You are doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, <laughs> so that's super fun. I love the retro look. If developers want to play with this and actually figure out how to code against it, what do they do? Yeah, so you can just click here, and then we show you basically some snippets in Python, JavaScript, or if you just prefer to curl it directly. And ju just to be clear, the tone, the, the personality is not tuned into the model. It's just prompted. Exactly, yes. You can just prompt it, um, and you can be as specific as you want. You can tell it exactly what kind of pacing, what kind of yeah. emotion you want to hear. Um, so it's very easy to, to play with. You can just like, you don't even have to follow this form, or just type in anything preform. That's awesome. Very cool. So that's GPT-4 Mini TTS, available in the API today for just one cent per minute. Very economical option for generating really lively audio. We thought the last thing to show would be how this all comes together. And to do that, we're releasing an update to our Agents SDK. Our Agents SDK launched just last week as a way to really encapsulate a lot of the best practices that we've seen in terms of building reliable text agents. Guardrails, function calls, write tools, it handles all of that stuff for you. And today, we're making it really easy to convert those text agents that you've already built into voice agents. So Yaroslav, I'd love for you to show us the code changes involved to make that conversion. Yeah. Um... Uh, so <clears throat> this here is the demo that we showed last week. So it's an AI stylist. Um, it's a customer support agent, uh, which you can use to look up um, some Patagonia jacket orders. Um, so let's first see how it works. This is just like a text-based agent. Okay. So I'm just going to ask for some recent orders. So you see it's... The debug information. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, it just 
printed the last orders, so it's like the same thing that, that we showed last week. Okay, now if I wanted to use this on the phone, what would I do? Exactly, so let me pull up the code. So here you can see um, it's the same configuration that we had last week, it's using the agent's SDK. Um, and we have three agents here, so we have triage agent um, that receives the initial message and decides what agent is going to process it. Um, we have stylist agent, which has access to web search tool, it, it helps you pick a style. And then we have customer support agent, which we just saw. Um, and it has access to past orders and it can also submit refunds. Now, let me open the backend server code. So it's a very simple uh, WebSocket uh, backend. Um, since last week, our team has made changes to the UI, so now UI can record audio and it can play audio back, and then that audio is streamed to the backend uh, with this WebSocket connection. Um, so what I'm showing here is, um, is a workflow, so it's uh, the same type of workflow that our um, agents SDK already supports. It's a text-based workflow, so it takes in user text, and then we pass it to the run runner, which feeds it to the LLM, and then we get back the output in a streaming fashion, again, as text, and then we send it to UI and then make it available for downstream processing. So this part is the same. Um, and this is the implementation of the, the backend. So basically, like when we get a message from a user, we run the workflow, get back text, and then stream it to the UI. Okay. So now let me show you how to turn it into a voice agent just with a few lines of code. Um, so first of all, we need to also handle audio messages from the UI. So I have some snippets I prepared to make it easier to demo. So basically we get a new chunk um, of audio and then we need to accumulate those audio chunks first. Um, I need to make sure I don't forget to initialize the buffer, right. And so now let's see, once we get the, the full audio, what we need to do is we need to send it to the agent. So here, um, we are getting the, um, the, the audio, we concatenate all the chunks, and then we feed it into this voice pipeline. So voice pipeline is a new concept we're introducing. Um, essentially what it can do, it can take your existing workflow and it can add speech to text on one side and text to speech on the other side. So essentially it will take audio, it will convert it to text, feed it to that workflow, which I just showed earlier. It will get back text in a streaming fashion if needed, and it will convert it back to speech. Um, and you get the output as a speech. So here, all those events, this is this is audio, and then we send it to the UI to to play. Um, so I just saved it. Yeah, let's let's see. Let me refresh this, um, and let's see. Hey, what was my last order? So it's doing the tool calls. Yes. Your last order was on February 9th, twenty twenty four. You ordered some Patagonia shorts in Olive, and okay. it's all fulfilled. <laughs> if you need help. What was the order number? The order number for your Patagonia shorts is AD507. If you need anything else, feel free to ask. Awesome. All right. So that was like nine lines of code yes. to build the voice agent. And now it's a voice Very agent. Very cool. And I guess if I'm a developer, I'm going to be wondering, if I build a voice agent, how do I debug it? How do I figure out if it's working well? What yeah. do you have there? Um, it's a very good question. So um, this is a tracing UI that we demoed last week. Um, and we updated it to support audio now. Um, so let's see, so this seems like uh, my most recent chat, I practiced a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, we can see that the, uh, the, there are traces here from our um, most recent conversation. Let me refresh this. Oh, this is the most recent chat. Um, yeah, so, so we can see that there are traces here from our uh, most recent conversation. Um, and as you can see, there are like all sorts of events. So for example, we can click on this one. This is my first um, request to the agent. Let's play it. Hey, what was my last order? Yeah, so it's integrated with audio. You can play it, you can look up metadata, you can see different timelines, latencies, errors, and, and so on. Awesome. That's pretty cool. So two new speech-to-text models, GPT-40 transcribe and GPT-40 mini transcribe. We're releasing the new text-to-speech model and openai.fm, and then this update to the agent's SDK to make it really easy to put it all together into rich, reliable voice experiences. That's awesome. We cannot wait to see what voice agents you build with those new technologies, and we have more coming in the coming month. Before we part, one last thing. OpenAI.fm, the demo that Yaroslav showed with the math scientist, is actually live, OpenAI.fm. Um, it's really fun, frankly, we had so much fun playing with it in the past couple of days. And so we thought, why not do a contest? Uh, you know, just like an old school like radio station, like a radio contest, if you will. Um, and so you have until tomorrow night, so Friday night, to go on open.fm and come up with like the most creative like use of that text-to-speech uh, technology 
and share it with OpenAI Twitter. Um, and we'll pick three winners, and we have this amazing gift uh, for the winners, which is a radio from our friends at Teenage Engineering. Special edition, there are only three in the world because there is OpenAI logo in the back. Um, anyway, go to OpenFM, share it on Twitter, and we'll send a tweet with like more details on the terms uh, of the context. Um, have fun, and yeah, see ya. Thanks. Thank you.